I have no idea. So now your family found, um, uh, got its pink letter or, uh, informing that, that you were going to be deported. Uh, did it come by mail? How, how, did, how did you receive it? I think it was delivered. And it, I think it was delivered. And what, did, what were the conditions at the time? What did, what did they instruct you to do with your valuables and your possessions? What kind of valuables? First of all, my father was in prison and they came, they took suitcases and stuff, the Germans, and they took away in boxes and in suitcases. Uh, my father had a big collection of art. They took it all away. Uh, the silver, everything that was valuable, they had taken away. And uh, the gold, I think, they had taken away too. I have no idea. Were you home when they came to take this? When they came home to take my father, I wasn't home. So when they took him, they took the, the, the possessions in the house as uh, well? I think afterwards or something. I, I don't remember. Did they permit you to take anything with you to, to go to the transport? With me? Yes. What? So you just went by yourselves? You didn't take any luggage or any possessions? Well, we had only luggage that was large enough for us to carry by, them, by ourselves that we were able to carry. So what did you take? You took warm clothes. That was the main thing. And then we, we took some uh, iron bran, uh, which we, because it had fat in it, and we felt, you see, the imagination grows then. And we took some... Uh, what, what is iron bran? Iron bran is roux. It's a mixture of butter and flour, and we cooked it that you put in soups or in sauces. And we did this because my parents felt, and not only me or us, all of us, that this gives us nutrients. So, but how much could you take? And a little bit sugar, and uh, then out of sugar, we made like caramel. And, because, and I think my mother put in butter also so that it was sweet and condensed. It was made out of condensed milk, but it didn't make and a little bit flour. I don't remember anymore, but all in all, for the years that I was in the concentration camp, so how much did it last? So you took some warm clothing That's what, it. that you could carry. And, and some, you know, towels uh, that and that's about it and then you walk out of the apartment that is completely furnished and it's like when you walk out of the apartment to go someplace or to go to a movie and you close the door and that's it do you know who re who occupied your apartment before after you left probably germans but you but you never saw or knew uh, who did occupy the apartment didn't interest me anymore. Who did you go with uh, in your family? Who, who, who were well, we went the whole family. My father, my mother, my sister and I. And were there other people in the apartment building you went to or just no, your family? No, we were the only and ones. And when you left the apartment building, where did you go? We went to a big as assembly hall. And there we stayed, I think, for two nights. And were you able to walk there from the apartment? Don't, I have no idea. I imagine maybe we took a streetcar or something. This is completely blank. And what was your feeling at, at that time? What were your feelings? How do you feel if you go away, leave the apartment, leave your home, close the door, have a little suitcase in your hand and you don't know where you're going, what you're going to do, what is happening to you. You're frightened. And when you got to this assembly building, do you remember about how many people were there? Well, since every transport was, I think, 800,000, so you can imagine. And did they feed you in the transit hall? Oh, they must have fed us something, I don't know. And where did you sleep? On the floor, where do you sleep? And did you know at that point where you were going? 
Maybe I think we knew that we're going to Terezin. I think. Did you know what Terezin was? Maybe I didn't know, but you, you know, when you bodily are not there by yourself, it's difficult to imagine. Even so, I do tell you the story, it's difficult for you to imagine. Were all the people in the uh, assembly hall, were they all Jewish? Yeah. Well, that was a transport. And when you then left the assembly hall, um, who was guarding the assembly hall? The Germans. The Germans, uh, German soldiers? Mm, or and German, whatever, yeah. And the, were they in uniform? Yeah, sure. What, what did the uniforms look like? And where, when, from the assembly hall, where did you go? We, we went to the railroad station and there we were pushed into cattle cars. How far was it to the railroad station? Not very far. Tell us about the cattle cars. Was your whole family together in the same car? Well, what can I tell you about cattle cars? That you're standing, all of you standing, and in the center of that cattle car is a pot or a something. So, and that is it. And you're standing like sardines. But how many people were in, in the car that you were in? I have no recollection. But w was your mother and father with you in the same car? Yeah. And, and, and any, the other people from your family? Well, there was not too many people. There was my sister, my father, my mother, that's it, and myself. And how long were you in the car before the train started moving? I don't remember. It must have been for a while. And did you still have your luggage with you at this point? I imagine so. Yeah, we did. And how long did the train move? It seemed like it takes forever, but uh, where we went it wasn't so far. My husband can tell you better the time than I do. Was it less than one day? Oh yeah, that it was. Yeah, but you know, on the way they stopped and uh, I guess if they had to let pass regular trains on schedule, before they push this one up again. When you were in the assembly hall, and then when you went into the trains, and when the trains were then taking you to the Raisenstadt, did you observe that any of the local Czech population saw that you were being transported? Probably, yeah. By that time already they knew. Did they, did so any what of did them, it help? Did, they, did anyone speak to you or at No, you? there was no way to speaking to us. There was no way. Who would go when you guarded by the Germans to go and and uh, speak to us? I was mean, if you uh, think about it in the reverse, you wouldn't do it either. Did you have any food or water on the transport? Food or water? Probably not. I don't know. Did anyone get sick on the train? Sure. What kind of sick did they get? Well, you know, exhaustion, um, but, uh, and fright, and uh, uh, all of a sudden you're not anymore human, so to speak. Was there a conversation among the people that were on the train? I have no recollection. Were any of the children very young? In the in the cattle car I was in, by my recollection, I didn't I didn't uh, remember that in our cattle car there were children. When the train finally stopped, what happened then? Nothing. The the German uh, opened up the cattle car and everybody's knees buckled because if you stand like this for so long and we had to take out our uh, 
so-called luggage, whatever we could carry, and then we walked to Theresienstadt, guarded by the Germans. So when you got off the off the train, you were in Theresien, the city of Theresien? No, 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 we were not. Where were it you? was maybe half an hour or so before Theresienstadt, or an hour, I don't remember anymore. So the, the 800 or 1,000 people... Had to walk. You see enough pictures or paintings of, of all the transport walking. That was why we were the same group. And what did the German guards do while you were walking? Was anyone... Pushing, pushing? people. Was anyone beaten? I don't, I don't know. I didn't see it, but it could have happened. Did you see anyone try to escape? No. And then when you got to the uh, Theresienstadt itself, what did you see? I saw a, a little town. That's what it really is. And, and what, what happened? What happened when they? Well, when they and then they assigned us where we will stay. And did your family get assigned to the same place? No, not my f women were separate in sep separate, uh, and men were separate. So my father. From that day on, never lived with us. And where were, were you assigned to? To a garrison. Do you remember what what, what location it was in Theresienstadt? It was a Hamburg Kaserne, but I can't. Uh, it's hard to. How, uh, it's difficult to uh, uh, describe it. Was Was there a street not name? There was a street in the front of it, but what it was, what block or what number, I don't remember anymore. And when you came to Theresienstadt, did they, uh, did you change clothing or keep your same clothing? What kind of changing clothing? There is no such a thing. So you kept the same clothing that you were wearing? No, probably. I mean, it's not, uh, you don't go to a fashion show, you don't change clothing. What kind of, I mean, maybe later on when you unpacked and maybe it was hot, so you put on a shirt if you had one, but, uh, but uh, uh, changing clothes, or maybe by that time you had the possibility to change your underwear and maybe rinse it out someplace. I don't remember anymore how it was with soap, if we had some or we brought some, I don't remember. When you got to Theresienstadt, were you given a number? Well, my number was given to me already before we started the camp, and the, to go to camp, my number was BF 621. And what did uh, the, the, was there any me meaning to the letters BF? No. That was a tra that was a transport number. Okay, so everyone on the transport had the same number BF. Yeah, but then it was. Uh, I think my family started 620, and then 621, 622, and 623. At any time, were these numbers tattooed on anybody in Theresienstadt? Not in Theresienstadt, no. So when you came to the, your new place uh, in, in, in this, this barracks in Theresienstadt that you were assigned to, what happened then? Uh, were there people there before you? Who was there when you got there? Well, other, other people uh, there already had prior transport. Were they from Prague? At that time, I think most of them were around Prague, or, or that were, you know, from all uh, Czechoslovakia. Eventually, they all came to Theresienstadt. And when you got to the the barracks, was there a room for you to to stay, or w what kind of facility? First of all, it was a garrison. Oh. There was not no such a thing, or hardly ever a room. There was a garrison with bunks. I mean, the military occupied it before. They were all the in. And, and they were. Uh, they had to leave. Even people who lived there all their life. It was a cute little Czech town. And uh, we uh, had bunks there, like three, uh, think high. And uh, that's where we stayed. 